my name is Frank Merkotter. I work as a development lead with Basis.com, and that's also where I've mapped the topic for my talk. Tute 5 on the microcontroller. The motivation was mainly uh, a customer request. Uh, we were asked about the feasibility of using a framework like Qt5 for a certain embedded application. The target the customer had in mind was an ARM Cortex M3, which is a large 32-bit microcontroller, so really the high end, but still a microcontroller, so no MMU, which means no virtual memory. What immediately came to our mind was basically to use UC Linux and run Qt on top of it. Uh, but unfortunately, the customer came forward with another requirement uh, that he intended to use only the internal RAM of the microcontroller, which is 128 kilobyte. So that was the end of that story. Uh, so uh, both uh, UC Linux and Qt are out of the equation. Um, but we were curious now, given some more RAM, can we run Qt on a Cortex M3, M4, utilizing UC Linux? Before I go on with my, uh, with my short story, uh, short interlude, um, UC Linux is not so well known, I guess, uh, so I try to explain the difference to a regular Linux. It's a special Linux port for MMU-less devices, which means no virtual memory which has a number of dire consequences. So you don't kernel and all the processes share the same physical address space. You have no protection. There's no nice contiguous virtual memory mapped together from scattered physical pages, which can lead to all kinds of ugly fragmentation problems. MMAP is vastly less efficient uh, you have ugly things like fixed size stacks for applications, you don't have a fork system call, and no shared libraries, at least typically. They are not so popular in these platforms as they are. Don't give you much. You might wonder why somebody wants to run su such a platform. Um, there are certain things that still make it attractive. Such a device might be more power efficient for your scenario. It might be a question of pricing. It might be available hardware. And such a Linux can still be a real valid option on the, as an option as you still get a wealth of, of software that you're used to on Linux. And a lot of things are just working out of the box. Yeah, we were still curious. Uh, we were, we started to look around a bit, and um, we came to the conclusion, yeah, it might be possible to use Qt, and uh, some of the vendors doing evaluation boards for these devices even had a, had a video on, on its website uh, supposedly running a Qt 4.7, but the video wasn't really satisfying our curiosity as it's something like 30-second, very Blair Witch style, it's dark, shaky. <laughs> and you don't, you don't gain much from the video. So, um, shopping time. We went ahead and bought an Evo board. It's a, the manufacturer is EMCraft, and the CPU is a Freescale Kinetis K70, which, and this board is uh, set up with 64 megahertz of RAM, a bit of flash, and it's clocked at 150 megahertz. Uh, you, get, you get a BSP and a toolchain from that vendor, and nicely enough, they, um, they included the demo from the video, so we could check it out right away, really based on Qt, uh, Qt 4.7, and we were quite surprised. Performance was good. It's, uh, of course, not a high-end device, but it was actually usable. So, so good so far. Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> but uh, we can't just go and uh, buy some devices to run a demo. Uh, so we try to get our feet wet by, um, 
by doing some work ourselves on that device. Uh, we try to get Qt5 running and then run some of our own demos and uh, code on top of it. And basically we we're trying to find out how much of Qt5 we can get working core GUI, Qt Quick 1. Qt Quick 2, of course, is out of, the, out of question as there's no GPU on such a small device. And um, it wasn't a large effort. It basically took a week for one developer to, to get the, uh, the parts of Qt5 we needed working. Um, the steps included we had to disable certain features, so have a, a custom Qt build with certain features disabled. There's no fork, so uh, feature no process is needed. You don't have uh, shared libraries, so feature no library, no plugins. This, uh, this of course meant a bit of work as these are not support, officially supported build configurations, so you have to sort out all kinds of small build failures uh, as these build configurations are typically never run. Another thing that caused us some grief was that it's a very old toolchain. It's a GCC 4.4.1, which is ancient. It's a bit too old for Qt, so we had to sort out all, yeah, some smaller bits there, but nothing serious. And um, yeah, no libraries means no plugins, so we had to statically compile in at least the basics like a Linux FB and uh, an input module to get going, and that was it. With that, we could run our first QWidget-based demos. Um, we then moved very quickly to um, Qt Quick 1. When we figured out that um, the kernel of that device was set up in a way that you could only allocate eight megabyte at a time, which is uh, uh, something you quickly get over when using uh, Qt Quick 1. So we had to fix the kernel a little bit. A little bit. There were some problems, but apart from that, um, we were good to go. We could uh, run our demos we had, uh, QWidget based, Qt Quick 1 based, and um, yeah, the wrap up to that story is, is can be done. The performance was better than expect, expected, actually. We were quite surprised. Some assembly is required, so you, it's not a configuration that just works out of the box. The interesting question might be, is it worthwhile? Uh, uh, that depends. Uh, it might be worthwhile for your project. Overall, I would recommend to choose an MMU full device as it's much more convenient to develop for, it's much safer. But there are certain factors that are forcing your hand. It might be that uh, the power profile you need, it might be pricing, it might be that the exi this existing hardware in the field you want to support, and then I guess Qt can still be a valid proposition and uh, a good platform even on such device. Uh, we brought the device along. If you want to have a look, it's at our booth. It's not set up, but I can uh, show it to you if you're interested. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, right. Uh, that's the end of it. My name is Frank Merkater, and please vote for me.